Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of That Podcast. Enjoy the show. Uh, well, do we want to talk a, a, a Bible thing? This has been fun just kind of yeah. talking about life. Sure. And mm-hmm. where things are going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, did you see something on this list you want to get into, or do you want to get into my first question? Let's just do your first question. Okay. Let's keep that it That involves simple. music, so I'm going to be terrible. Oh, there's no music. There's no oh. music. I just needed That's this in the for back some, of the book. Yeah. It's it's between I just saw It's between all the where words. Where you opened it right away and I was like, Ugh. It's between all the words and the and the maps. So this the Athanasian Creed is the Athanasian Creed. Yeah. The funnest of all three creeds. Yep, and the longest, isn't and it? And the longest. And it, and it's also the newest of the three. Since when is there three? Tradition <laughs> says that the Apostles' Creed is the oldest and that each part of the Apostles' Creed has a section that comes directly from one of the Apostles. Okay. Now, that's, that's not exactly that true, but sense. there is there is uh, something called the Roman Creed or the Old Roman Creed, which goes back to the first century, uh-huh. which is the heart of the Apostles' Creed. Okay. Then you have the Nicene Creed, yep. which was formulated based on the council in a town called Nicaea in 325 AD. Mm-hmm. And who showed up at that little council? But our buddy Athanasius right here. Okay. Uh, against his 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 uh, villainous foe, his his frenemy for life, uh-huh. Arius. Oh, okay. And Arius taught... This is very much like a Hamilton and Burr yes. situation. Yeah, Excellent. oh, totally, totally. Uh, between the two of them, they were both excommunicated twice, I believe, and brought so back... So they were excommunicated, and someone was like, yeah, we can let them back in, and then they're yeah. like, that was a horrible mistake. Right. Well, one bishop was like, you're gone, Athanasius, and then Athanasius had another bishop who was like, oh, yeah, well, Arius, you're gone, and then they both came back. But... The fun little tradition story (laughs) is that along with Athanasius and along with Arius Mm -hmm. at the Council of Nicaea, and they were arguing over the nature of Jesus. Okay. Arius taught that Jesus was like Babe Ruth. He was more than a man, but he's less than God. Okay. Okay. Whereas Athanasius said, no, he is 100% God Mm -hmm. and 100% man Mm. at the same time. Mm Mm-hmm. Wrap your head around that, boys and girls. Yep. Um, and from Athanasius, we get what's known as the Trinitarian formula. Uh, and this came out of the 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 creed that came out of the Council of Nicaea. It's where it's all laid out about how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit interact. A, a fun little side story, though, is that uh, it got so contentious at the Council of Nicaea that another famous person that you both know very well punched out Arius for his heresy. Really? Yes. You'll never guess who was throwing fisticuffs. Uh, what year was this? Like he named yeah. them Thunder and Lightning against Arius. What year was this? 325 AD. 325 AD. So it was before Paul Cross. Yeah, it was before Paul Cross. Yep. <laughs> what? Yep. <laughs> You're going to throw out that's not what I thought you would. <laughs> do you want a hint? Yes. Uh, I do. You want a hint? Mm-hmm. Um, He's been known to um, herd reindeer. Santa. St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas. Yeah. Wait, wait. No, I get that reference. That was in one of the stupid Christmas movies that came out in the last couple years. (laughs) Which one was it? Or as Dana called him, the saint. That's what Santa means. Santa Claus. Yeah. St. Claus or St. Nicholas. Uh, Tradition says... Uh, and this is more lore than anything, but but he got so ticked off at Arius that he he punched his dukes, he punched his lights out. Said, "Put wow. up your dukes." The nice. man, the man who gave ch- gifts to children and puts them on a yeah. naughty and nice list. Well, yeah. that's yeah. that was the inspiration for um, uh, what was the movie with uh, the guy from Stranger Things? That's yes, I think they reference him fighting the guy in that. Movie. Oh, do oh, they do? The oh, okay, <laughs> what was the name of that movie? I don't, uh, uh, I, I know it was on Netflix. I remember seeing previews for Something it. Something Night. Oh, Violent Night. Yeah. There Violent right. Night. It, it's, you know, it's a that was movie. a, uh, <laughs> it, have you seen that movie? No. It's, it's like, it, it's, it, interesting. It, it's it gets an, really weird at the end. It's an homage to uh, Home Alone and Die Hard. Yeah. So if you like those two movies. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's it's really two it's, other great Christmas classics. It's uh, to, not to keep bringing Paul Cross <laughs> back into this, but it's uh, in u- using his words. I don't baptize everything in that movie, so don't show it to your children, your minor children. But, no, uh, definitely okay. not. Was it called 
Now that now you said the name of it, was it called Silent Night, Violent Night? No, nope, just Violent Night. Just Violent Night. Just Violent Night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And he's like mercenary Santa. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I like my title better. <laughs> it's <kind of> clever. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'm I got almost it. positive they make a reference to him. Is this fighting a, some? Now like, I gotta go watch this on Netflix. You Thanks a lot, guys. To, you have to. It's it's, it's good. It's, it's one of those things that like once you watch it, you're like, I'm I'm good. I've seen I've it. Seen I never it. have to see <laughs> it again I'll, I'll, in my I'll life. I'll watch it. I'll I'll but. put it on my I'll put it on my yearly <laughs> list. It's uh, again it's not for funny though. Not for children. It is funny, but uh, yeah. It's yeah. It's it's uh, well mercenary Santa. <laughs> The reason I bring up the Athanasian Creed is because uh, just... Please don't send us hate mail if you do watch it and you don't like it. <laughs> You've been warned. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, to uh, Dana at atonement.live. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a couple... Just two Sundays ago, I think. It may have been two Sundays ago or last... I don't remember. Very... This just happened. Uh-huh. Uh, we had uh, Holy Trinity Sunday. And for those who are uh, liturgically minded, mm-hmm. uh, you know them because they wear the color of the day uh, in church on that day. So people who were wearing white knew it was Holy Trinity Sunday. It was the Sunday right after Pentecost Sunday. Okay. And so the people that knew it was Pentecost Sunday wore red. And then on Holy Trinity Sunday, they wore white because it's a high holy day. And on Holy Trinity Sunday, um, in our tradition service, once a year, we... Oh, is that why you switched them? Yes. Ah. We share responsibly the Athanasian Creed. So, okay. But afterward... Yeah, that was this Sunday then. After it's done, um, this has happened two years in a row where I've had people come up with questions afterward to be like, hmm, why did we say this okay. in there? And I just want to go through it, and I want you both to tell me, what do you think was the contentious issue okay. in the Athanasian with- Creed. No, Santa oh. doesn't show up in the Athanasian okay. Creed. Okay. <laughs> he shows up in the minutes of the Council of Nicaea. <laughs> All right. So Athanasian Creed, it's a bit long, so so tuck in, everybody. Get okay. comfortable for story time. I'm going to share this with you. If you hear some, I'm going to go through each line. If you hear something that sounds contentious, okay. share why, okay? So this is this is how it begins. And I always say that if... if um, um, there's a, a little thing that's been going around in the office, uh, uh, a video by a guy who does something called Lutheran satire. Okay. And it's called um, Bad Analogies. Okay. And it's a cartoon about St. Patrick speaking to two Irish peasants about how to explain the Trinity. Okay. And through the whole thing, they're like, that's, they keep calling him Patrick. That's a bad analogy, Patrick. <laughs> and and in it, it's funny because these these illiterate peasants basically point out all the heresies that all the different um, allegories and metaphors that we use to try to explain the all the analogies that we try to use to yeah. explain the, the Holy Trinity get close, but they always end up falling into the heresy lake. Okay. Okay. So what I say is, if don't try to explain the Trinity using analogy, just go and read the Athanasian creed, especially if I'm preaching and the sermon is long and boring, (laughs) just go read this. It'll get much more out of it. Okay, here we go. First line. Yeah. Whoever wants to be saved. Okay. Should above all cling to the Catholic faith. Okay. Whoever does not guard it whole and inviolable will doubtless, I can barely read it. Doubtless perish eternally. Okay, so uh, was the uh, the Catholic Isn't faith a Lutheran book? Like we're talking about Catholic. So that's not it's not the <laughs> oh, Catholic. It's, it rung to both of you right yeah, there. It's, it's not the Catholic. <laughs> that's why I was looking at. It, I was like, does it really say Catholic? I'm yeah. reading it from the yep. Lutheran hymnal for church and home. Yep. Also known as the Reclaim hymnal, and not just any type of Lutheran hymnal. This is not the ELCA. Uh, this is this is the centrist, uh, very traditional. Um, uh, uh, reclaim hymnal editors that like were the conservatives when the green hymnal came about. So it probably also says uh, the Holy Cra- Catholic Church in there rather than the Holy Christian Church. It does not. Does what? it? When it speaks about the Apostles' Creed, uh-huh. it uses the older Christian in place of Catholic. Okay. But there's a reason why they use Catholic for the Athanasian Creed. Okay. Because it's only been translated that way. 
Okay. Well, so, then translate it differently. <laughs> well, when you go it, back it, to it, the original writings of these things, they're translated certain ways. The earliest version of the Apostles' Creed, which is used interchangeably all over the place within many different Christian denominations that come out of the historic faith. Mm -hmm. um, there are three creeds that are held up by all Christians. If you don't believe what's confessed in these creeds, then you're not technically a Christian. Mm -hmm. It's the, uh, the Apostles' Creed, and that's the creed in which we baptize. Okay. When we baptize, someone will say, do you believe what the Apostles' Creed says? We'll read it line for line. The Nicene Creed is the historic creed to understand who Jesus is, and the Athanasian Creed is kind of like the big book summary of everything that you need to, to know, to understand who God is as one God and three persons. Mm -hmm. But when it was written, Catholic here is being used uh, synonymously with Christian, mm -hmm. with Orthodox, and the word means universal mm -hmm. or, or the one, right. the one church. Yep. Don't tell them that. So it was, <laughs> it was written before there were schisms in the church. Uh, that happened around 1000 AD, you had the first big schism between the East and the West. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't an issue with the Athanasian church. So Catholic here does not mean Roman Catholic. Right. Because it, it, it never meant that until yeah. after the Lutheran Reformation and then after the Church of England got founded. Okay. There was no Roman Catholic Church until right. then. I mean, just think about that for a minute. Luther wasn't a member of the Roman Catholic Church. He was just a member of the church. He was a member of the church. Yeah. yeah. And his side got got vilified as well. You're you're one of those Lutherans, mm -hmm. and so the Lutherans were like, well, yeah, but you're one of those Romans. Yeah. And after the Church of England, after King Henry was like, I'm the Pope, and left. <laughs> um, then it became it became the Roman Catholic Church as compared to Church of England. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. <laughs> Well, that's what King Henry basically said, yeah. you know. Anyway, so... I feel like there are a few more words there, but sure. <laughs> yes. But the first time this... paraphrasing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but every time, that's been one question that's come up to say, why do we say Catholic? Right. Because Catholic here is small c, meaning universal or the one church, the mm -hmm. church of Jesus Christ, uh, not Roman Catholic. And right. I, I think it's a bit of a disservice to us, to any Christian... When you speak about members of the Roman Catholic Church to say, well, they're the Catholics, when truth is, if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believe that what the three ecumenical creeds confess is true, mm -hmm. we're all Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, we just happen to be what Martin Luther said. We're, we are not Roman Catholic. We are evangelical Catholic. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the oldest term that I can think of. Or... Mm -hmm. To sum it up, we're Christian. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, moving on. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, this is the Catholic faith. We worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the divine being. Make sense? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when you get confused about all the different, you know, uh, uh, God is like water. He's steam and he ice ice liquid. and liquid that's a heresy it's called modalism and it was outlawed by the the one of the ecumenical councils very early on it's the idea that god takes on different modes okay so what that would be confessing is that god is one god and one person who puts on different modes okay sure you know because h2o can be solid liquid and it's not three different things. It's yeah. three different <clears throat> modes of the same thing. Okay? Right. Yep. Okay. Heresy. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Spirit is still another. Okay. But the deity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, co-eternal in majesty. So their deity, their, their godhood. Okay. That's what that means. None of us have deity. Nope. Right? Mm -hmm. We're humanity. Mm -hmm. We're human. So all three, three persons, but one God. What the Father is, the Son is, and so is the Holy Spirit. Uncreated is the Father. Uncreated is the Son. Uncreated is the Spirit. I feel like it's saying a lot of the same. 
Yeah. That's kind of the point. It's getting across that what the Father is, the Son is, and the Holy Spirit is. There's going to be a distinction, but at this point, it's getting across the Godhood yeah. of one God and three persons. Okay? So, the Father is infinite, the Son is infinite, the Holy Spirit is infinite. Eternal is the Father, eternal is the Son, eternal is the Spirit. And yet, there are not three eternal beings, but one who is eternal, as there are not three uncreated and unlimited beings, but one who is uncreated and unlimited. Okay. Yeah, I'm breaking brains now. I can see I can see the turn in the head. Almighty is the Father, almighty is the Son, almighty is the Spirit, and yet there are not three almighty beings, but one who is almighty. Thus, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and yet there are not three gods, but one God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, so, go ahead. So, okay, so can I ask this? Mm-hmm. Why does God refer to Jesus and the Holy Spirit as us? Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the genius of the Trinity. The Trinity is, is, is uh, eternally united. Mm-hmm. And yet in the being, in the essence of what that is, we don't even have words for it. We call that God. Okay. And we don't call that gods. In other words, splitting up mm-hmm. the, div- the divinity of it, uh, but it's, it's one. Okay. Even though it's, it's multiple in persons. Okay. Okay. So let's see if I can answer your question. Uh, thus... The Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord, and yet there are not three lords but one Lord. Okay. Okay. As Christian truth compels... I can't see and speak at the same time. Ah, I lost my page. No. As Christian truth compels us to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so Catholic religion forbids us to say that there are three gods or lords. Okay. 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 The Father was neither made nor created nor begotten. Here's one of the distinctions between the three persons. Okay. Okay. So the one, the being that we know as the Father, God mm-hmm. the Father, was neither made nor created mm-hmm. uh, nor begotten. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. The Son was neither made nor created, but was alone begotten of the Father. Okay. What does it mean to be begotten? I don't know. I'd have to look up the To beget. Beget. What's that? <laughs> What'd you say? I was gonna, I'd have to look up the definition. <laughs> That's what Google's for. Any ideas? Google machine. <clears throat> um, uh, begotten. This is probably something that you'll, you'll give me the answer and I'll remember it. I just well, haven't thought of begotten for a while. They do have it in the translation of the Bible where they speak of... Um, the one and only begotten son. Begotten, not made. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's begotten, not made. It's an interesting word, wow. and it's a word used purposefully. No, I don't like that word. <laughs> well, you don't like the spelling? or I just don't like it. It's a weird word. Basically, it means born. Mm-hmm. Born. Of Born of man. Is what it says. When we are okay. born, yeah. Yeah. Um, are we made? <laughs> we're all, we've already been made by that time. But we're made, right? We 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 have a beginning, mm-hmm. uh-huh. right? When we are born, we are created beings, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So the word "begotten" is an interesting Greek word. It didn't exist until the Nicene Creed. They literally created it to explain Jesus, word. and as it's evolved it's come to mean born yeah in english okay and so in the bible you can even read things like like a ahishadab begat jehoshaphat and jehoshaphat begat amon that's an, that's a way to translate the word but it it it's specifically it literally means bring into existence by the process of reproduction right okay to create to make but the way that it's used here means the biblical language of Jesus is the son of the father. Yeah. Even though he existed before his birth, uh-huh. therefore he's not 
so he, born so much as he's begotten. He's not made or created. And this is the argument of Arius. Arius would say before there was a time when the when the word was not. Okay. Because if you look at John's gospel, at the beginning it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word uh-huh. was with God, and the word was God. Right. Arius' big argument mm-hmm. was Jesus is God, but he's just a little bit less than God the Father. Sure. Oh, I get it. And so the Athanasian Creed is explaining what the Nicene Creed confesses, that Jesus was begotten, mm-hmm. not made. That's okay. exactly what it says in the Nicene sure. Creed. So, and... and um. And since Mary was a virgin, this is I'm, I'm not saying this to be funny, but basically Jesus was already there. He was just shrunk up and <laughs> put in there. Sure, why not? And then he was eventually born. Because when when what? Nothing keep going. Because when we're when we're uh when we're born, we've already been made. We've been conceived. If that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. Uh, well, all right, kids. The birds and the bees and the way this works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, you you have. We've already have been the, made. You have the potential You're saying that our, to grow into a fully. The, the potential is yeah. all there from the moment that you're conceived. Right. Right. In Jesus' case, because because uh, uh, God says, "I stitched you together in the womb." Yes. You're already made. Yes. And if you look at what Athanasius says, or what the Athanasian Creed says, it says, according to uh, two things, Christian truth compels us to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, and Catholic religion forbids us to say that there are three gods and lords. What that's saying is, is that Scripture asserts that the God of the Old Testament is not like the gods of Rome or Greece where they'll come down and sleep with humans mm-hmm. and create demigods. Which demigods is what, that which are is what more, was happening. Yeah, like like and so Arius is basically saying Jesus is like Hercules. He's more than a man but less than God. Uh-huh. And the Greek and Roman myths see the gods as very fickle and petty and very much like big powerful humans. I mean, that's what the gods are in that mindset, and that's looking at the world and trying to make sense of it and to control it. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you look at like the etymology of the names of the of the Greek and Roman gods, you go far enough back, well, Zeus is the name for the sky, mm-hmm. and they just began worshiping the sky. Right. Right? Um, Thor, another good example. Thunder, yeah. Thor hitting his anvil. Um, in the case of, of the Jewish claim about God, is that God does not do that. God is other. God is transcendent. God is spirit. Uh, and God is hidden. If God is to show his glory, you'll die. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the, the ongoing uh, message in the Old Testament. And so God doesn't do this kind of stuff. God doesn't come down and sleep with people and make demigods. Uh-huh. And so this is not what's being asserted in the Gospels. Rather, something much more profound is happening. God is becoming incarnate. Um, And so the language is very important. Jesus begotten is because even prior to the birth of Jesus, he existed. Yeah. He's he's the incarnate word of God. Mm -hmm. Um, The event of his birth with Mary is even the understanding of of conceiving. Why is she conceived? Because the word made it so. Mm -hmm. God spoke and it was so. And if God is God, God can create life in the usual means or can create life in extra ordinary means by his choice. But in the case of Jesus, it's not as if Jesus didn't exist prior to his birth. It's that he is incarnated um, with, with, uh, uh, with Mary uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and, is, and is born just like any one of us, born completely human. And yet it's God. Yeah. So. Do you think our spirits all existed before we were born? So that is actually a Greek uh, mindset and worldview. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's above my pay grade. Um, I will say that there's a lot of heresies that have come out of thoughts like that. Mm-hmm. And I am of the mind that rather than a Greek worldview, I prefer a biblical worldview, which is that. Spirit is not separated from body. 
uh, as long as there's life. Okay. So prior to my body existing, my spirit did not like have an existence prior to that. Okay. I heard something fun on George Norrie one time. Okay. And I've always thought about this. Mm -hmm. So they were talking about when the world's going to end because that's been talked about for ages, right? Sure. Two thousand long long time. Since the world was created, they've been talking about when it's going to end. Yeah. Didn't the Mayans calculator run out already? Yeah, Yeah. 2012. Yeah. Yeah, I think a few calendars have run out already. So anyway, this guy's theory was that uh, God is so merciful that what's going on is that uh, we keep being born. Basically, it's a spinoff of reincarnation, but not really. We keep being born because after, if you die uh, without accepting Christ, you get another chance. Mm, okay. And you get another chance, and you get another chance, and God is so merciful. Just restarting that, the game, being that, like, make the right choice, that make the right choice. It, it's, it's like uh, your transition from this world to being with Jesus, uh, that's kind of a graduation for you. And everybody who doesn't do that, we win. You, get a, you, get another, you get another go at it. And another, you get another, another, another spin at the wheel. He, he, and, and so his... His theory was that the world is not going to end until everyone comes to Christ. Well, that's a nice thought. It's interesting. It's yeah. it's the heresy of uh, it's it's Hinduism, yeah. um, just with a Christian wrapping on it. Okay, I didn't. I don't know anything well, that's, about uh, Hinduism. Hinduism and and Rebirth. and the the issue of reincarnation. Don't they have a timeline though? No, no. You if you're a bad person. Karma will come to you if not in this life, in the next, because you'll be reincarnated as a lesser as a lesser ah, the, creature. Yes. Oh, okay. If you're good, then you get elevated. Then you get elevated, and if you are good enough, long enough, then you'll get elevated to nirvana. Um, and so Buddhism is kind of the they same. They weren't way. very good, though. You didn't like they, Nirvana? They were they were they were better as the Foo Fighters, in my opinion. You think so? Yeah. Well, well you know that they got reincarnated. <laughs> <laughs> they leveled up. <laughs> they leveled up, um, and you know, I mean, it's it's a it's a nice idea. I thought they were the ones that had like you have so many lives. Um, no, I don't think so. I think I think in in um, in the Hindi cosmology, you can huh. continue for, and you have all kinds lives. of different lives and and different um, um, previous lives that you can learn from and mm-hmm. discover and so on. Mm-hmm. I actually find it to be a very cruel cosmology because um, there are caste systems in India and it is thought to be more compassionate to allow a lower caste child to die of starvation than to help them. Mm. And so Christians get persecuted in India for helping the least of these following the mandate of Jesus because they're trying, they think they're trying to help them. Because all you're doing is is making it harder for the family, right? Making everybody su- miserable. Yep, that can't support this child, sure. and therefore, and to me, that's a that's that's a, a very cruel worldview mm-hmm. um, to consider someone so meaningless. Sure, that it would be a mercy to let them die because then they'll come back in a higher state because they suffered so much or whatever. Sure. Um, whereas for Christians um, and from a Judeo-Christian worldview, uh, all human life is sacred and valuable because we're all made in God's image. Okay. So. Gotcha. Anyway. Sorry. Back to my story. If I can get there. Okay. So the father was neither made nor created mm-hmm. nor begotten. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. The son was neither made nor created, but was alone begotten of the father. Mm-hmm. And here mm-hmm. brings another thing in. If there is no Jesus, uh-huh. is there a father? What do you mean? Sure. Of what? The rest of us. I don't know. The <laughs> universe. Are, are, are you <laughs> saying that, that God is your father? I don't know anymore. How? I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Why not mother? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, is that um, it's Jesus who makes the distinction between father and son. Okay. If there was no incarnate Christ, 
then there's no need to speak of God, this all, you know, El Shaddai, Almighty God, as Father uh-huh. or Heavenly Father. It's Jesus who makes that distinction. Okay. And it's also Jesus who reveals that God's um, chosen distinction is Father as compared to Mother or something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the, it's the revealing of Scripture for that. Okay. You know, I mean, God often often has motherly traits within Scripture and is spoken of in, in motherly terms. Yeah. So is Jesus, actually. Okay. Mm-hmm. But in in the case of the relationship between the two persons of the Trinity, God the Father and God the Son, the the definer of that is the Son. Okay. Just like, Ryan, you were not a father mm-hmm. until you had a son. Right. Would you agree? Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's the same type way of understanding the nature of God. And it's why Christianity has trouble with other monotheistic religions that just don't understand the Trinity, um, including Judaism, which, you know, I think they would have had less of a problem with calling God as Father and God as Spirit. That mm-hmm. made, that made total sense. But God the Son was, was a line too far, especially God incarnated, because God is transcendent in Spirit and not hidden. Okay. God remains hidden. So um, Jesus is the definer that makes God the Father. So when, when people talk about Jesus as God's only son, it's you can say that, but I think people misunderstand and think of like God is God, then you have Jesus, who is a person, mm-hmm. and then you have the Holy Spirit, which is like a power. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not the Trinitarian language. God is... God uh, the Father, God is God the Son, and God is God the Holy Spirit. The Father is a distinct person from the Son, who is a distinct person from the Spirit. Mm-hmm. One God, three persons. Yep. Got me? Yeah. Okay. As compared to God, Jesus the person, mm-hmm. and the Spirit being a power or God within us. Right. Okay. Dana's right. looking... Don't do anything. She's going to listen to it like five or six times. <laughs> All right. At least one more. So the son was neither made nor created, but was alone begotten of the father. Okay. That means that he, was, he wasn't he was created or made, but he was begotten. Okay. What does that mean? Well, it's a word that's made specifically for Jesus to explain his existence. Okay. Uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the physical world. Mm-hmm. Now, the spirit gets a little tricky, too, because it says the spirit was neither made nor created, but is proceeding from the Father and the Son. Yeah. This is probably the most um, scandalous of all the statements because it caused the great schism between the Eastern and Western church. Why? So, Because they talk about the spirit already in the, in the Old Testament, way back. It was a big fight. It was a big fight between the Greek Christians and the Latin-speaking Christians. And it comes down to this word, homoousios. Okay. Um, does the Holy Spirit proceed from the Father, or does the Holy Spirit proceed from the Father and the Son? Yes. <laughs> the Greeks would say... <laughs> There's a difference between those two statements? Yeah, there are, and people yeah. went to war over it and yeah. killed each other for it. Um, for the Greeks, the Holy Spirit proceeds only from the Father, but not from the Son. Okay. For... Trinitarian Christians of the Western tradition, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. And this is a a scriptural basis because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And therefore, in Scripture, when it speaks of the Holy Spirit, it's good for you that I leave, for I will send to you... My Spirit. My Spirit. I will send to you the Helper, the Mm -hmm. Paraclete. And the Paraclete, where does the Paraclete come from? It's, I am sending it to you. And it, and it is coming to you from the Father. So it proceeds from the Father and the Son mm-hmm. according to the witness of Jesus in Holy Scripture. But from the Greek perspective, no, no, only from the Father, not from the Son. And that caused the so great So again, that's, putting, that's elevating the Father above the Son, mm-hmm. like we talked about before. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's the big distinction between the Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox, and the Roman Catholic. That and, and the Greek Orthodox have a patriarch and the Roman Catholic have a pope. Yeah. And they they schismed or schismed, whatever the term is. Mm-hmm. They broke up and, and excommunicated each other. Yeah. So Okay. All right. Now, 
I'm going to skip on down to the end because that's where the last question came in. Does that work for you rather than yeah. going through yeah. all the rest of it? Sure. Okay. Um, I'll just add, add, add uh, uh, the summary here. Um, although he is God and man, he is not divided but is one Christ. He is united because God has taken humanity into himself. He does not transform deity into humanity. In other words, Jesus is glorified at his resurrection not the other way around. Okay. Okay. Um, he's not glorified in his humanity. He's glorified in his, uh, his humanity is glorified in his resurrection. Um, he is completely one in the unity of his person without confusing his natures. For as the rational soul and body are one person, so the one Christ is God and man. He suffered death for our salvation. He descended into hell and rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We've all heard this before. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Yeah? yeah? So say we all? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. At his coming, all people shall rise bodily to give an account of their own deeds. Okay. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bodily resurrection. This is where the question came in. Those who have done good will enter eternal life. Those who have done evil will enter eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. One cannot be saved without believing this firmly and faithfully. Okay. How am I saved if you're sending me into fiery... Well, you're not saved if you're going into fiery fire. But, so, what is an evil deed then? Yeah, because remi- of that. <laughs> that reminds me of the chosen when the Roman soldier is like, either you go do it or I'll use my fire of fires, <laughs> teacher of teachers. <laughs> Sorry. All right, what now? What's an evil deed? Those who have done good will enter eternal life. Those who have done evil mm-hmm. will enter eternal fire. Okay. Why would why would someone who's Lutheran have a problem with that? Because uh, are we saved by our good deeds? No, no. not by works, but by what? By faith in okay. Christ alone. Now, if if you've gotten this far in the Athanasian Creed, and this is something that Luther talked about, of course you're not saved by your good works. Uh huh. And yet, you will do good work spontaneously if you believe everything that came prior to this. You told me I couldn't have a list in the last episode. <laughs> now you're telling me I need a list. Well, it's you believe believe in uh, one God and three persons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then then you'll aud- you'll spontaneously do good deeds because you have faith in it. Will just come w- forth. The truth. But yeah. okay, but what about sinning then? Yeah, we're all sinning. Yes. Okay. Yes. So Is that. Not an evil deed, then that counts in that. Well, what, that what, list? where, where's the, yeah, where's the chart that shows you what the <laughs> evil deeds are? Well, and, and flip to, to the back of the book so that I can see what I need to avoid. And again, if you, what's it, the point system here? What are we assigning? <laughs> see, I love it. Immediately, the sinner's like, all right, now what do I got to do? Yeah. To dodge the bullet, yep. to stay away from the fire of fires. Well, when you read that, it says those who have done evil are yeah. going to head the wrong, the wrong yeah. direction. So, what is evil? Well, prior to all this is the entire gospel message mm-hmm. and the and the impression that's given. And again, the reason why this is translated this way is because this is how it's originally been since the get-go. Right. Okay? Um, but in talking about the faith as a whole, what it's saying is those who believe in Jesus Christ are automatically good okay. and will do good works. Those who are evil are those who do not believe in Jesus Christ. And therefore, okay. will do evil. It's that whole um, predestination type question. Like, how yeah. do you wrap your head around that? Well, you can't. Yeah. Ultimately, the point is, if you believed everything that came before, then what this is presupposing is, of course, you will do good mm-hmm. because you believe all of this. Right. And we are a faith of orthodoxy, not a faith of orthopraxy. Orthopraxy means right actions. Right. Practice. Orthodoxy means right belief. Mm-hmm. From your belief comes your right actions. Okay. Now, okay. we also confess that we are sinners. simultaneously saints in Jesus Christ alone and sinners in and of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And part of faith is trusting that Christ's justification for me is greater than my sinful nature. Okay. And because I believe in Jesus Christ, I will not be um, glorified or justified in my sinfulness. Instead, I will give it all to Christ so that it belongs to him and not me. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you're really worried after reading the Athanasian Creed, 
then always remember that this is supposed to be in worship. You're hearing the gospel, and everything that you you should always hear in the gospel is always present tense of a promise of giving Jesus over to you. So I announce to both of you, Jesus Christ died for your sins. All of your sins are forgiven. Do you believe that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you're saved. I also believe I'll likely start over right now. This is the Catholic (laughs) faith. And it never, we never move beyond (laughs) clinging to Jesus. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Washed clean immediately. (laughs) (laughs) Rinse and repeat. (laughs) Good enough? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. I did, I did have a question. What were, what were, um, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit doing prior to thinking we, you know what? Let's My son asked me this question all the time. Like, were they sitting around <laughs> playing cutthroat and one day decided, you know what, we should do something? I think they were playing <laughs> euchre. Yeah. And they needed a fourth. <laughs> <laughs> so, can't play euchre with just three people. <laughs> cutthroat. <laughs> playing cutthroat. You know, it, it, that's the big question. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's, it's kind of like the question of, was your spirit alive before you were alive. Right. Right? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, again, that's prior to my existence. So for me, there's nothing prior to that. But the Christian faith confesses that prior to everything in all of existence that we know, there was God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And according to Scripture, God was not alone. God in God's singleness is triune, mm-hmm. is relational. And so that means that God God was complete even without the creation. Right. So then what does creation become? It we becomes just a side project? No, no, no. It becomes a complete act of self-giving because we are not necessary to complete God. Right. But God is necessary to complete us. Yeah. So oh. that's what creator means. It mm-hmm. means to pour yourself out. Um, you know, it's it's a synonym in many ways with love. It's, it's pouring yourself out. Um, and now you consider something to be more important than yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's God's response to his creation. And it's why it hurts God so much when we rebel. Um, because God loves us even a thousand times more than a parent loves a child. Mm-hmm. Or, or any, you know, I, I was talking to Dylan, <laughs> my son, about this. And he's like, so when you turn 18, are you an adult? I said, boy, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I said, legally, no. legally you have adult responsibilities, but being an adult is when you can take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. But even more so, I think hmm. adulthood happens <laughs> when, when you're able to take care of others. Sure. Yep. When, mm-hmm. when something or someone is more important than yourself. Mm-hmm. And when you're, when you're self, um, well, what would right, the right word be? Um, you're not being taken care of by someone self-sufficient. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but it's more than that. Like it, yeah. it, it's not just that. It's, it's the, um, being a good neighbor, being able to serve others, but having your own autonomy. Mm-hmm. All that is is part of being an adult. Yeah. But he always asks me all the time. He's like, so what? So if God created everything, what was what was God doing before? Or or what? Wh- was there, what was before God? That was, that's the question I get sure. a lot. What, and I don't understand the logic of that because maybe you can explain it to me. When I think of God, I think of, well, that's kind of like, that's, that's the source that uh-huh. there's nothing before God because, right. but I also think of like, if you can think without, before there were dimensions, uh-huh. time and space, what is there? I've, yeah. The right. Mm-hmm. The, the time thing. That's it's, what we can't yeah. put our head around. Right. The idea that time. Yeah didn't exist or did exist and it's him trying to figure out like okay so there's time clearly there was a start point for us what right. what was right what's a black can, hole and yet and yet we have don't, no problem. don't do it ryan <laughs> let it go well, let the black hole go and yet as a society we've convinced ourselves through rational thinking that it makes perfect sense that at one point all of existence was a dot uh-huh that was infinitely dense yeah I well, like, that's, how, that's I like compl- how it's called the God moment now, or what's it called? The yeah, God, the God, uh, they have to, yeah, because it's the only way to, to properly explain what they're trying to explain. But what I just said makes no sense, right? Sure None does. in a materialistic world. What I just said makes no sense yeah. whatsoever. No, it does not. 
all of existence in one little dot that's infinitely dense. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking it's about? Like, it's like uh, it's like the leash on the on the the cat in uh, Men in Black. Remember? Yes. Oh. Yes. The collar, the yeah. little yes. universe uh, the collar, yeah. On his collar. But but again, I mean right. what what you've what I've just described mm -hmm. according to to a materialistic world is absolutely Aren't we on a golf ball then? is absolutely impossible. It doesn't make sense. It's not possible. Right. Yeah, it it uh, it's it's not on a golf ball. We're at the end of Men in Black. It was, oh yeah, doesn't he hit or no, he's yeah. on a like a marble. Oh, yeah, we're a marble. A, it's a marble. We're a marble. Yeah, it's a bunch of marbles. Yep. And I guess I guess that's my point. It's like we we can say things like in a rational world, a materialistic world, you don't need God, ha ha ha. But usually the hypotheses for the beginning is are just absolutely absurd. Um and and you know, I'm I I think of like Occam's razor, the simplest explanation. Mm -hmm. A much more simple explanation is that before the boom, yeah. there was the source. Right. Yeah. And the source is, is what what we would call God. Right. And we can't wrap our head around that. Yeah. The odds are just you can't wrap your head around that either. The the odds of everything working out for us to just be here right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I don't like thinking about it. It makes my brain hurt. I love the scientific answer for that one. Well, of course it would seem that way because we're in the midst of it. <laughs> So, you know, we yeah. exist, therefore, sure. this is how it's supposed to happen. Right. <laughs> okay. So what's a black hole? Okay, so um, next episode, what are we talk about? <laughs> All right. Well, good. That was good. Mm -hmm. I like that. Should we call her good? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. I will. All right. All right, let's pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for my friends here and, and for giving of their time. Uh, I pray that uh, they would both get some rest, especially after this this very full um, uh, mind bending conversation. As we just wonder and speculate about about, for lack of a better term, the awesomeness of God. Um, thank you for our time together, and uh, I ask that you would bless everyone who's heard this conversation, that they would know how much they are loved uh, by you, and that you choose to be down to earth and you choose to be known through your son, Jesus Christ, and that all who believe in him uh, will be saved. Um, we don't need to understand all the, all the theology. In fact, much of it is, is hearing it and trusting it to be true because of who you are for us, um, rather than trying to explain in ways that, that f just feel wrong, uh, that make you less than. Um, we gather together and we discuss and we trust your your guidance and through your word uh, to better understand who you are and who you are for us. And so thank you for our time together. Uh, may your word go forth and may it return to you um, fruitful. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Do you need an outro or nope. do you have that? Oh, okay. Well, then see. Hey, one more thing. If you're still listening and you're listening to this, uh, what's the date today? Uh, but June. between June and like the middle of July, mm -hmm. if you're not doing anything on a Monday night, and this is the year of our Lord 2024, go up to the uh, Pepsi softball complex way, way up north in like South Grand Forks and watch the atonement. Uh, if you live in the Fargo-Moorhead area or in, well, they can come in Western North Dakota. You know, we have people who listen to us in Washington State. I think he's saying, hey, and get a plane <laughs> ticket. Yeah. Come on down. We'll have you. The, that would be awesome. Yeah. That would the, be cool. the Atonement Acolytes are playing softball up at the, the fields up there. It's mm -hmm. a good time. Good times. Beautiful night the other night. So they would appreciate some people to come cheer them on. So uh, Monday nights at 6.30 p.m. That's mm -hmm. so good. Yeah. And if you're listening to this after like July 15th, don't worry about it. Because <laughs> you'll go up there and there might not be anybody there. <laughs> All right, see ya. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for that podcast. Don't forget you can find all of our services online every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for a tradition service or 10.30 a.m. for a modern service. You'll find them at atonement.live atonementfargo.org or on YouTube where you can also find all of our library of content. So thank you again for joining us and we'll see you next time on another riveting episode of that podcast. <laughs>